now available in paperback and e-readers, Isis, Samurai Goddess. The Goddess Next Door takes on Kung Fu killers in this action-packed martial arts Isis series adventure. Get Isis, Samurai Goddess, in paperback and e-readers today. I was reading through the comments section of those Black Panther trailer videos, and I was deeply disturbed by a lot of what I read. Now, a lot of what I read pretty much showed me something that I pretty much pointed out in a novel that I published last October called Spellbound. And in that novel, Spellbound, I pretty much went into how many black people want to fit into a black box that makes them acceptable to whites. And when it came down to many of the comments left in that comment section regarding this Black Panther, I pretty much saw how deeply spellbound many of these Negro nerds are as it relates to these comic books, science fiction, and fantasy, and how they want to fit into that black box that makes them acceptable to white people. And as I was making my commentary about this Black Panther, I saw how deeply many of these Negro nerds and many of these Afro-American Negroes deify and worship at the altar of white people. And one comment that was particularly troubling to me was this one. One of these Negroes decided to say that it didn't matter who created the Black Panther. And as I listened to that, that was deeply troubling to me as a black writer, a black publisher, and a black fantasy character creator. Here you are telling me it doesn't matter who created the character, and I am a black creator. And you're telling me that it, it doesn't matter who creates the character or who makes the stories. So basically, you are so spellbound, you're telling me that you will sit here and take a black character that is created by Stanley and Jack Kirby, two Jews, and put that character over a black character that was created by a black creator. And that character, created by those two white men, has a higher value to you than that of a black creator. You pretty much proved my point about being spellbound and wanting to fit into the white box. Moreover, the same person goes on to say that, oh, the Black Panther is a king, and he's a king of an African country. Well, I have that to say to this. Your Black Panther is the king of an African country in a universe that is pretty much controlled by white people and is a property of white people. Whereas the character like I write, like John Haynes, who is the CEO of a corporation, is the man who rules the world, which is run by a black man. So which character has more power in the bigger picture? The black character who is a king in a kingdom controlled by a white universe, or the black man who is pretty much the ruler of the world in a black universe? Which one has more impact to you? So you say that it doesn't matter who created the Black Panther, but who is more powerful, John Haynes or the Black Panther. As I see it, the John Haynes is much more powerful than the Black Panther. Why? Because John Haynes is one, is a character who was created by a black man. Two, he is a black character in a black universe that is run and controlled by a black man. And three, he is pretty much owned and controlled by a black man. And that third aspect should be the most important thing to many of you Negro nerds, because when your company is owned and controlled by a black man, guess what? The image of the black man is controlled by black people. It is a black owned property. It is a black property controlled by a black man. It is a black property owned by a black man. And guess what? When it's owned and controlled by a black man, guess what? A black man is controlling the image of black people. And this is something that goes over the heads of many of those Negro nerds who wanted to, de to deride me and castigate me for making criticisms of the Black Panther. As a black publisher, I own black properties. As a black publisher, I control black properties. As a black publisher, I control the image of African Americans. So I have tremendous power 
that many of these Negroes just don't understand about. Even though I am a small independent publisher, I have tremendous power over the black image. And I make efforts to present a positive image of African Americans out here. And I pretty much try to tell those stories about black people that most black people don't see. All most black people who are spellbound see is that Black Panther is a king in the Marvel Universe. Well, he is a king who is controlled by white gods. And because he is controlled by white gods, you see this Black Panther as having a higher value, and you, the real person who has the real value and the po power is a character like John Haynes, who pretty much is the ruler of his own world. He is the front and center um, character in the SJS Direct Universe. The foundation of the SJS Direct Universe was built with his story, and he pretty much is the lead character. Now, characters like Isis, they also have are important to the SJS Direct Universe as well, because here we have a black woman who is a part of a black universe and is a prominent character in a black universe. So we have a black man and a black woman in a black universe controlled by a black man. Same thing goes for the East Team character, who is a major part of the SJS Direct Universe, who works side of John Haynes, and when you see them on the cover of The Temptation of John Haynes, guess who you see? A black man and a black woman. And this black woman, East Team, goes through so many changes that she pretty much be, be, transforms into a great black woman to stand at the side of that black man. But no, that doesn't have any value to many of those Negro nerds. No, the Black Panther is the great character because he's been created by these white people. And these white people pretty much created this character who says that he is a king and is a king of an African country that is in a white-owned universe and is controlled by white gods, so that character is important. Then many of these same people talk to me about Storm and how Storm is a goddess. Well, Storm, again, is a blue-eyed, white-haired goddess who was created by two white people and is the white person's idea of what black women should be. Now, compare your Storm to Isis, and there is no comparison. Your Storm pretty much is just there to be a white man's fantasy, and that's pretty much what she was before she married this Black Panther. But you can't tell the Negro news this. Now, I have comic panels that pretty much show me how little regard your storm had for black men in comics. Before she married and divorced this Black Panther, she was pretty much being passed around by your white boys. But these same people will tell me Isis is not black enough, even though the Isis character is the daughter of Osiris, she is a goddess, and she pretty much was an aide and a support to the king, the king of Nubia and the prince of Nubia, and was the closest friend to the king and the prince of Nubia. And she was the best friend of the prince of Nubia in a story like Omari's Revenge. Moreover, your Isis character pretty much traveled all the way from her journeys in Japan um, over 1100 years to America, experienced racism, married a black man, um, this is all featured in the first Isis, and had a black child. And she pretty much went through getting, seeing her family murdered and lynched in the first Isis. And, but this character is never considered black by black people. They say she's not black enough, even though she has experienced um, slavery in Nubia and experienced slavery and racism in America and pretty much tried to help black people at, during the Reconstruction and even tried to help black people during the period of Jim Crow by establishing the Theta's sorority. But this black woman is not considered black enough for many of these Negro nerds. And many of these Negro nerds will pretty much try to attack me because they say me being critical of this Black Panther movie pretty much is something that I shouldn't be doing. I should be out here trying to support this movie, which pretty much is just a way to not give us a op real opportunity of helping other black creators because when it comes down to black creators, Marvel makes no efforts to try to help guys like me. They have never really made an effort to hire guys like me 
or other black creators to really diversify their catalog, which is why Marvel Comics is in trouble right now. But to them, we have to go see this Black Panther movie, even though Marvel Comics has made next to no efforts to try to hire black creators, um, work with black creators, or try to bring in black writers and black artists to its publishing arm. Moreover, your black, oh, your black, your Marvel Comics has really not made that much of an effort towards helping black creators. Period. Because again, if you are so, if you're so stoked about getting the black dollar, you think you'll be making an effort to try to reach those black creators. But no, they don't want to do that. But you can't tell these Negro nerds this. According to these Negro nerds, we need to support this Black Panther movie and we need to go out and go support them, even though they have never really made any efforts towards supporting black creators, black artists, black writers, and really no real efforts towards supporting black films. And that's really troubling when you think about how much Wesley Snipes did to pretty much save the superhero movie genre. Now, back in the 1990s, when the superhero movie genre was at rock bottom and Joel Schumacher had pretty much made superhero movies die with that atrocious Batman Forever and Batman and Robin, Wesley Snipes came out with Blade, and Blade pretty much revived the entire superhero movie genre. What did, and what happened after that? Did we see more super black superhero movies? No. They went right back to business and let Wesley Snipes go on his way. They pretty much abandoned Wesley Snipes. But many Negroes actually believe that we're going to see more black superhero movies. And what's really backwards about that statement, you know, is that there aren't that many properties out there for Marvel or DC to make regarding black superheroes. And many of those properties are extremely obscure. I mean, who's going to spend a hundred million dollars on a Falcon movie? Who's going to spend a hundred million dollars on a Blue Marvel movie? Who's going to spend a hundred million dollars on a Battlestar movie? How are these properties going to open up the market for um, new superhero movies on the Marvel side or the DC side? And what bad guys would these guys face? I mean, think about it. These guys don't aren't really the deepest characters, they don't have the deepest rogues galleries, and they don't have the deepest stories to adapt. So that whole argument about this Black Panther movie opening the doors for black superheroes and black superhero movies, that's pretty much a wash when you think about it. Because, the one, the roster of black characters at many of these companies does not run that deep. And two, the stories you can adapt are not that many. So we look at that, and that's a wash from that point. Another point that's a wash is the historical context, because remember, after Blade came out and pretty much revived the superhero genre, did we see a revival of superhero movies that featured black properties? No. In 2000, when Halle Berry played Storm, she was the fifth wheel in the background. That pretty much shows us how little they regard black characters in these movies. And none of the black characters have ever played a prominent role. But because black characters have a small resurgence, you have the Negro nerds hoping, wishing, and praying that this will lead to a revival that leads to the people paying attention to them, and especially white people paying attention to them. Because that's what this Black Panther movie pretty much represents to them. It represents getting the attention of white people, getting the approval of white people, and being acknowledged by the God who pretty much controls their comic book universe. For them, being a part of a comic book universe is being accepted by whites, and the reason why they like the Black Panther so much because he's, is because he's a black person who has been accepted by whites. They really don't aren't about real creativity and creating your own universe and being the master of your own world like I am, because that's one of the things I do with my characters is show that the black characters are in their own universe, they're in their own world, and one of the things that is prominent in most SJS Direct books is this. 
most of those characters aren't looking for white acceptance, white approval, or white validation. They are in their world, living their lives, doing their thing, and they spend their time doing their thing for themselves. That's what, to me, is what a universe of black characters should be. It is a world pretty much created by us. It is a world created for us. It is a world that pretty much shows a positive example to other black people of how we should live and how we should pretty much be in living our lives. Our lives should be about putting ourselves first and focusing on what is important to us. When I create characters and stories, it is about those black characters in their world, not about black characters looking for white approval or white acceptance or being icons of that or can be used as tokens to get acceptance and approval from white people. For me, black fantasy, black science fiction, black comic books, it's about us creating our own world and showing our vision of our own world. And this is something that many of the, these black Negro nerds don't get about black fantasy or black science fiction. This is where my vision pretty much differs from theirs. My vision for black fantasy and science fiction is creating a world for black people, showing them a bigger picture of the world of black people, and showing us that we have a just as great a world, or even a better world, than the world that is presented to us by the mainstream media. And showing the picture of the world that I believe people like John H. Johnson and many black authors were trying to do bef during the Jim Crow period when we had our own black businesses, when we had our own black institutions, and when we were living our lives for ourselves and not to win the acceptance and approval of white people. That's the world I'm trying to create with the SJS Direct Universe and the stories of the SJS Direct Universe. And for some people, they'll sit there and say, you were being critical of Black Panther and that's you were doing that because you wanted to get sales. No, I want people to open their eyes and see that, you know, you spending money with white people on a white-owned character, how does that help black people? I mean, yes, it's nice that they want to make you a Black Panther movie, but why should you be sitting there begging for them to make a movie about their a character they created that's supposed to represent you when you should be going out here and trying to make your own properties. I mean, I look at the works of people like Ava DuVernay. She pretty much showed me how you can pretty much make your own stuff. And I saw that with the way she did I Will Follow. She didn't sit there and just um, wait for white people to approve of her. She went out here, made that film for $50,000, got actress Sally Richardson Whitfield to star in it, and then went and got that film distributed in theaters through a black distributor, made her all the money back on that film, and did that all without looking for the approval or the attention of a single white person. And when she did that, that's when they started coming to, to her. And then when she saw what they were trying to do and trying to push a narrative on her, she left. And the reason why she left, as I see it, is because she understood the image of black people and why it's important to control the image of black people because when, when it's black media is controlled by black people we control the narrative, we control the story and when we make the money we have the money and the power to control the influence of that media and that narrative. That's why a publisher like me is important because we pretty much are making efforts to control the media and the narrative and the image of black people but to many of these Negro nerds that's not important. It doesn't matter who created the Black Panther to them, but it's important to me why I created John Haynes. It's important to me why I created Isis. It's important to me why I created Eastine. Why did I create those characters? Because I wanted to create positive characters because when I open up a Marvel comic or a DC comic, I don't see me in the forefront. I see me in the background. I see me as an ancillary character. I see me occasionally getting to be in the front of the story, but after a couple of months, I get pushed back to the background, and then the white heroes come to the foreground. 
the only place where I saw characters that, that looked like me, I saw it as to do was to make my own. But you can't tell that to the Negro nerd because in the eyes of the Negro nerd, the white man's ice is always colder and the white man's characters are always better than his own. And this is why they will sit there and tell me a Wakandan king who is controlled by a white god is more important than a black man who rules his own world. And that pretty much shows me how dysfunctional many of these Negro nerds are and how dysfunctional their thinking is because they only like science fiction and fantasy not to open up that vision and see a world with themselves in it they are looking to be a part of a world where they get acceptance from white people and if you want to try some of the stories in the SJS Direct Universe such as The Temptation of John Haynes and the ISIS series you may do so by clicking the link to Amazon.com in the description box and if you want to help me pay for the covers for the SJS Direct 2017 catalog which was delayed um, for the last almost six months you may do so by donating a dollar or more to my Patreon by clicking the link in the description box or to PayPal in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.